Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Wayne Ma, and I'm the Director of Security Solutions here at SUSE. I'm joined today by Chris Baudet, Sales Engineer for Rancher Government Solutions, for short, RGS for short. Today, Chris and I are going to talk about Linux security modules offered in SLES, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. So we're going to discuss AppArmor and SE Linux. We're in a world of ever-changing and evolving threats from phishing, viruses, malware to ransomware. How do these attacks get into your network? Consider all the different types of software you're running on your network. Every OS and every application is complicated and complex with potentially millions of lines of code in each one. How can we protect our companies from attacks that continue to become more sophisticated, spread faster, and give us less time to react? Well there are a bunch of different approaches to making sure your network and your servers are protected. We suggest starting with the basics first, securing your OS, then making sure your applications are protected using accessible tools. And in this case, they're free. So the worldwide server market continues to grow and Linux is continuing to trend upwards as a used operating system. According to the IDC, 68% of all servers are running Linux. This gives attackers a large attack service to try and exploit. Let's compare Windows and Linux for a minute. Over a three year period, Windows has doubled the number of CVEs, common vulnerabilities and exposures, than that of Linux. The average Linux CVEs per quarter is 117 over the last three years. The average CVEs per quarter on Windows is 244. To summarize, what we're seeing is the quarterly CVEs are trending slightly above average, which means that today's security posture and impl implementations need to be maintained and expanded upon to reduce and control this continuing threat. So the Linux security module itself is a framework that provides mechanisms for various security checks. So Linux systems have a large number of vulnerabilities, as we just discussed. We can start to mitigate the threat through use of access controls. We can use the framework for security policy modules. We can control security, mod security policy itself, uh, mandatory access controls, and we can do whitelisting to establish uh, best practices through the LSMs. There are a lot of LX, LSMs available to uh, Linux. What we offer right now is SE Linux and AppArmor. So both of those two are probably the most too popular in the world right now. Uh, so there is also Smack, Toyama, and several others that are gaining popularity. But today, like I said, we're here to talk about SE Linux and AppArmor. So let's take an example. So Atlas Technology is a vendor that facilitates the vehicle inspections in the state of Massachusetts and several other states experienced a cyber attack recently uh, on March 30th. This prevented the RMV uh, Registry of Motor Vehicles to inspect and conduct vehicle inspections for everything statewide. So once a year, all cars need to be brought in for inspection. So in this particular case, App Plus's application was attacked. They were unable to stop the attack immediately. Uh, they were in essence finally able to shut it down, but the attack caused them to be down for a little over half a month. And what that did was that backed up everything. It caused a lot of businesses to have to shut down because that was their main source of revenue. Many of these places did up to 40 or more inspections a day. And what this did was it left uh, the registry of motor vehicles vulnerable. And it did it, like I said, for eight different states. This could have been prevented if they had applied LSM type technology to their applications and to their OSs where they could lock it down and prevent uh prevent the breach in general so let's uh let's look at the benef business benefits of an lsm 
The increased productivity is something that IT professionals love. It lets them plan updates and not just react to issues. It gives them time to breathe. So regulatory compliance itself, let's talk about STIG, let's talk about uh, things like PCI and PCI DSS and HIPAA. All of these frameworks require different pieces of the puzzle. And those different pieces of the puzzle can range from an LSM to different firewalls, et cetera, et cetera. But the starting piece of that puzzle is the LSM to lock down that OS. So let's talk about peace of mind. So peace of mind, protecting against threats and zero day attacks. One of the key things that we can talk about in this particular case is the solar winds attack. So it was a zero day attack, which hopefully could have been prevented. Uh, the attack involved hackers compromising the infrastructure of solar winds, and they're a company that produces a network and applications monitoring platform called Orion. So in this particular case, Orion was uh, had a distributed Trojan put into the software itself, and this caused uh, 425 of the US Fortune 500, 10, uh, the top 10 US telecom companies, and five US accounting firms, and all branches of the military to be compromised. And all because certain precautions were not taken. Based upon what we can do with the LSM, we could have prevented some of this. And if it was run on Linux, this would have been an easy solution to make sure we were ahead of. So with that, let me turn it over to Chris. And Chris can talk about why an LSM is enabled and more, of, more about the LSM. Thank you, Wayne. So uh, the Linux security module is a framework that allows um, you know, the Linux kernels to support a variety of, of computer security modules. Uh, the LSM framework is licensed under the GNU um, general public license and has been a standard part of the kernel since Linux 2.6. Uh, Linux security module was uh, designed to provide flexibility to allow um, developers and security engineers uh, the ability to successfully implement a variety of, of uh, security modules, including mandatory access control modules. Um, the intent was to be able to develop these modules without making um, changes or, or making drastic changes to uh, the Linux kernel, which would force uh, a reboot of the kernel um, to support those changes. So what is mandatory access control? So mandatory access control is a type of access control where the operating system constrains um, a user process or a thread that's running on the or running in the operating system um, from accessing um, resources in the operating system. And those resources can be things like a file or a directory structure or directory path to a particular file, um, access to memory segments where code can be overwritten in that, me in that memory segment um, or, uh, or a, an IO device. Um, so how is this done? Uh, the Linux security module will insert what are referred to as known as hooks um, in the, the module. And those hooks are implemented at every user level system call um, in the kernel where, um, where the user level system call will have access to an important kernel object. Um, in there. So if we take a look at the diagram on the left hand side of this slide and we'll step through kind of the, 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 the flow, uh, you'll see that there is a at the application uh, in the user space, uh, a system, a user level system call is made. It goes through a series of evaluations. Um, and eventually when it gets to the user uh, to to access the uh, kernel object, that's where the Linux security Linux security module will inspect and analyze that. And based upon the profile or policy of the LSM and the pattern of, of the code will allow or deny it. Uh, if it's allowed, then the access is made to those kernel objects. Uh, the execution is done in, in the kernel space and, and, the, and the application um, continues. Next slide, please. So we're going to take a, a look and compare a little bit between the two Linux security modules that we're highlighting today. Um, uh, Security Enhanced Linux, or, or referred to as SE Linux and AppArmor, 
Um, if we take a look at where they were originally sponsored, um, SE Linux was developed by the NSA here in the US um, with contributions from the, the Canadian government as well. Um, as in, again, with AppArmor, you'll see it's also originally had its uh, um, the initial development here in the US in the Department of Defense and, and the various agencies within the DOD. Um, this, the, and the next row, the approach or the philosophical implementation here is really, uh, there's, it's, it's a little bit of a difference in terms of how these two LSMs were developed in, in the intent here. On the SE Linux side, we see that the initial approach is to deny everything at the system level. So uh, this, whereas opposed to AppArmor, where the um, approach is to deny everything at the application level. So just please take a note of those two differences. Uh, and we'll have some slides to illustrate that uh, that concept in a couple in a couple slides here. <clears throat> we talk about integration in, in Linux, um, and they're both the same for SE Linux and AppArmor. Uh, the modules are are uh, a, are, are part of uh, monitoring the, the user space um, up and into the kernel. Um, the performance impact of each, uh, of course, when we introduce some inspection and analysis um, of the code stream, there is some performance implications. Um, Current testing um, has shown that SE Linux is uh, approximately somewhere under 5%. AppArmor itself is a little lighter than that, um, 0 to 2%. Um, test results vary. Uh, we take a look at, at the restrictions we'll see for SE Linux. It's, again, mandatory access control. Um, it also provides role-based access control and multi-layer security, along with network labeling. On the AppArmor side, uh, the, mandatory, uh, the mandatory access control um, the role-based access control, um, and A, an, an ability to implement some multi-layer security, although it's not as strong in um, technique and implementation as in the SE Linux side. So for multi-layer uh, security, then, you know, uh, that, that's definitely a strength of, in the SE Linux space. Um, the, if we take a look at the profiles and policies, SE Linux is much more of a uh, programming language programming construct in that um, the policy needs to be written and then compiled um, through uh, using the make command on, on the operating system. And so that runs as a, as a, as a binary in, in, the, uh, in, in the system itself. Whereas on the AppArmor side, that's uh, the, the profile for AppArmor is a, is a simple text-based file, uh, Unix style um, file that you can edit with your with a simple VI or, or your, your text-based editor command. Um, it's, and again, it, it's your typical file structure. Um, so therein lies some of the differences between, you know, um, SE Linux and AppArmor in terms of the, the complexity and implementation of, of the two. Uh, again, SE Linux tends to be a little bit more complex, but offer you greater granularity and in, in control of, of the policy that you want to implement. Um, AppArmor isn't as complex, easier to implement, but may not have some of the controls that you're looking for based upon what you're trying to achieve. Uh, when we take a look at um, the availability across the distributions, um, SE Linux is, is supported in CentOS and in RHEL and in SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. Um, when we take a look at AppArmor, um, Ubuntu is a, is a big supporter. Um, AppArmor uh, App is also in OpenSUSE and of course in SUSE Linux Enterprise Server itself. Um, note that uh, SE Linux is also supported, uh, as I said, in, in SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. So when it comes down to which Linux security module makes the most sense, it's really a, a little bit based upon your requirement in terms of um, what you're trying to achieve and, and then uh, some of the experiences with it. Um, when we take a look at adoption, uh, SE Linux is probably better known here in, in the US and Canada, you know, from, from a, an implementation perspective um, in the user communities. Um, AppArmor, you know, it's listed as being worldwide, but the truth is that it's, you know, so is SE Linux. It's, it's, there's no restrictions in terms of where it can be used. So I would just say that AppArmor tends to be uh, adopted and, and implemented um, outside of the U.S. more so than SE Linux um, and vice versa. Um, when you take a look at support from within SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, um, support is, is for both Linux security modules. So again, when it comes down to, you know, using SUSE Linux Enterprise Server and uh, the various uh, Linux security modules, it really it comes down to your requirement and what LSM is going to work and be most effective for what you're trying to accomplish. Next slide, please. So at a very high level, uh, AppArmor is, is easy to use, um, as we said before. Um, 
you can actually get policies um, written and tested in hours versus sometimes days um, to when we compare to some of the typical experiences that you've seen with between AppArmor and SE Linux. Um, to restate SE Linux, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a programmatic implementation, much more um, granular control, um, but with that brings more complexity. Um, you'll often hear you know, folks compare and contrast which one is better or, or than the other one. And again, I, you know, from my perspective, it really comes down to you know, which one is going to be the right tool for the uh, implementation or the security implementation that you're trying to achieve. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so um, to bring this to a comparison between the two, uh, and in, and to reiterate one of the points that were, was made in in the table comparison, um, when we take a look at um, the differences between SE Linux and AppArmor at the system level, um, you'll see that initially SE Linux is a deny everything approach, whereas AppArmor is an allow everything approach. And I'm going to highlight at the system level. So if we if we visualize the system as a house um, in in this respect, then SE Linux will deny entry into the house and anything in the house um, as its default entry point. So it would be up to the uh, to the security engineer or the kernel engineer to to write a policy that would allow uh, one of those resources to then access or or to be provide access into the house and then have availability of the resources within the house. So again, uh, the outer shell is in the approach is kind of a deny everything approach. Uh, contrast that with what we see from AppArmor at the system level where um, user processes are allowed to see and, and access resources um, at the system level so they can see those things. Um, however, we proceed to the next slide. We'll see that once you're inside the system and trying to execute at the application level, that's where the, the implementations change. So again, on the SE Linux side, once you're in the system and at the application level, you're allowed access to those application level resources. However, with, with AppArmor, uh, you're allowed access into the system. And then when you try and execute at the application level, that's when you the um, that's when the AppArmor um, LSM kicks in and you are then denied access to the application level resources pending what the profile for AppArmor is. So again, system level, SE Linux is deny everything. App Armor is allow everything at the system level. At the application level, it's SE Linux will allow you access to everything once you're inside the system, whereas App Armor will then uh, restrict and deny everything from at the application level itself. Next slide, please. However, uh, one back, please. Thank you. However, there is, of course, the caveat that um, depending upon what uh, on the SE Linux side, what is done at the application level, um, the security controls at the system level uh, can still override um, any actions that are taken in the application. So they're still inspected, even though you're, you're in the system, the system level policies will still apply. So anything done at the application that, uh, that impact the system level policies, those policies will still be in effect and can override and deny those actions. Thank you. Next slide, please. So a little bit about uh, looking ahead in terms of some of these uh, confinement and constraint security techniques and, and, and modules. Um, we just wanted to highlight what's called the extended Berkeley packet filter, so eBPF. Um, so the Berkeley packet filter is, a, or the extended Berkeley packet filter is, is, is a, uh, will run as a virtual machine inside the Linux kernel and and SUSE and SUSE security engineers are, are looking at this particular technology and technique to enhance our security profile and posture uh, in addition to the Linux security modules themselves. Um, and the reason for that is that the, uh, the extended uh, or eBPF is, is a very high performance, deep level packet processing capability that will allow um, security engineers and kernel engineers to inspect the, the, the packet stream or the data stream coming in and executing in the system and application space itself. Um, so when we, so it provides um, high performance packet processing, um, system call filtering, those, though, again, those user level system calls that are trying to access the kernel level objects um, and that deep packet inspection capability. Um, so this, this 
type of technology makes a lot of sense. You know, when we take a look at at the packet filtering capabilities, just from um, where it, it, it kind of the heritage of of eBPF, um, it, it's easy to see where you can write a, a network program to attach to a network um, socket and filter, then analyze and take action against um, the incoming data stream across that network socket itself. Um, so um, eBPF is currently available in SLES 12, SP4, uh, and 5, and then uh, our most current code stream, SLES 15 uh, plus. So just a little bit of, of uh, beyond the LSM, if you will, in terms of the this technology being available today and, and here at SUSE, a look at uh, augmenting and implementing eBPF as an additional security capability um, for your overall security posture. With that, I'll turn it back over to Wayne. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. This sounds a lot like uh, my old network days when I was doing intrusion detection and prevention. The old IDP technologies built into the network are now making their way into the OS. So with that, we will wrap up. Uh, for references and links, we provided you guys where we got all of our uh, information for this, nist.gov links, uh, our hardening guides for both um, SLES and SLES 15.1, 15.2, and many of the other links to uh, the kernel kernel.org and several other places where we pulled information from to give you guys the best experience today and get you guys the most up-to-date information we could. With that, we'll wrap up and thank you all very much for attending today. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat or track down Chris and I and we'll see what we can do to answer any of your questions. With that, we can wrap up and thank you very much for attending and have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. Thank you.